Hi guys. Welcome to our new episode on the world's fastest plane. That is the SR-71. Let's start. The SR-71, unofficially known as the Blackbird, was a long-range advanced strategic reconnaissance aircraft developed from the Lockheed A-12 and YF-12A aircraft. The first flight of the SR-71 took place on December 22nd in 1964, and the first SR-71 to enter service was delivered to the 9th Strategic Reconnaissance Wing at Bale Air Force Base California in January 1966. No SR-71 has ever been lost or damaged due to hostile action, in fact its incredible speed enabled it to gather intelligence in a matter of a few seconds, while streaking across unfriendly skies. From 80,000 feet, it could survey 100,000 square miles of Earth's surface per hour. Despite the aircraft's incredible flight characteristics, the US Air Force retired its fleet of SR-71s in 1990 on January 26, because of a decreasing defense budget, high costs of operation and availability of sophisticated spy satellites. Blackbird operations except training flights, were officially terminated in November 1989. The SR-71 Blackbird remains one of the most legendary aircraft of all time. Over the span of its five-decade service, it ran thousands of missions over sensitive areas, outrunning thousands of missiles launched at it, the majority of those from the Soviet Union, and setting the record for the fastest plane ever to fly. In 1990 on March 6, one Blackbird famously set a series of world speed records on its retirement flight. The SR-71 with tail number 6417972 was flown from California to the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum at Dulles Airport, where it would eventually go on display. In the process, it set the official National Aeronautic Association Coast to Coast speed record of 2,086 miles in 1 hour and 7 minutes, averaging 2,124.5 miles per hour. What eventually came to kill the SR-71? though, was not a better plane, but a combination of technological advances, budget cuts, and a reorientation of US strategy away from supersonic spy missions. The principal factor however was cost. In spite of the plane's unparalleled service record, it was simply too expensive for the US Air Force to continue to run after the end of the Cold War. Air Force officials were frank about this fact in 1989 hearings. As per reports, Air Force Chief of Staff General Larry Welsh identified the increased survivability of reconnaissance satellites, SR-71 vulnerability to the Soviet SAM-5 surface-to-air missile and the cost of maintaining the SR-71 fleet. The cost factor is the most significant to the Air Force because it limits expenditures in other areas. Reagan Administration Air Force Secretary Edward C. Aldridge Jr. estimated that the money used to operate the SR-71 fleet could operate and maintain two tactical fighter wings. Second factor that Welsh cited concerning advances and then Soviet ground-to-air missile technology, most prominently Moscow's new S-300 missile defense system. New aircrafts including the MiG-31 Foxhound also played a role in the Air Force's decision to quit while they were ahead. Soviet and subsequently Russian missile technology improved, other US technologies improved alongside it, mainly spy satellites, which could take pictures of sensitive areas without any danger from anti-air missiles, and, when such missions were still needed, the emergence of unmanned aerial vehicles, these drones, including the Lockheed Martin RQ-170 and the Northrop Grumman. RQ-180 played important roles in the war on terror in Afghanistan, as well as duties in South Korea and elsewhere. Military drones were never an exact successor to the SR-71 and the precise role it played in the Air Force's operations though narrowed by spy satellites remains unfilled. A successor aircraft, the SR-72 Duckster, might be able to plug the gap, but it remains unclear when, if ever it will first take off. In its financial year 1994 appropriations, Congress authorized a reinstatement of funding to permit a revival of part of the SR-71 fleet. By that time, many of the 20 surviving SR-71s were being prepped for museum displays, but at least a half dozen were in storage at Palmdale, or flying research missions with NASA. The US Air Force moved too slowly on the path to SR-71 reactivation, and in October 1997, using a line-item veto, President Bill Clinton deleted the funding. 
the Black Bad was permanently grounded by the US Air Force in 1998, leaving just two at NASA's Dryden Flight Research Center at Edwards Air Force Base. One of the last NASA missions for the SR-71 was the Linear Era Spike SR-71 experiment series conducted in 1997 and 1998. The object was to study aerodynamic performance of lifting bodies combined with aerospike engines, such as would have been used in the Lockheed Martin Skunk Works X-33, the demonstrator for the conceptual venture star single stage to orbit reusable space plane. The latter program was abandoned by NASA in 2001 but pursued by Lockheed Martin thereafter.